Okay, today we are going to solve an example. The example reads, a model with a scale of one-fourth is to be tested to determine the velocity of discharge from a pinhole crack on the side of a pressurized tank. The velocity is a function of the pressure in the tank, wall thickness, diameter of the pinhole crack, and the viscosity of the fluid in the tank. Take the viscosity scale as 1.4. A. Find the prediction equation and submerge requirements. B. Find the velocity scale. Okay, so I will go through this whole process okay, that we established the steps. Step number one was writing what is the velocity function of, and the question says that the velocity is a function of the pressure inside the tank. It says it is the wall thickness, so I'm going to call this L, okay, diameter of the pinhole crack, okay, and it's a function of the viscosity. It doesn't mention the density, so I'm not taking it in, okay. Next, I'm going to go through the step two. In the step two, I'm going to express each of these parameters with respect to the basic dimensions. For a change, I will be using FLT in this time around, okay? The velocity, regardless of FLT or MLT, is going to be LT minus one. The pressure, okay? So, in the FLT system, the pressure will be force divided by area, right? That's how I obtain uh, pressure. So, it's going to be F L minus two. L will be L diameter will be L and the viscosity will be F L minus two and T. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's demonstrate how we obtain this. So basically I use the shear stress is equal to viscosity times DU DY, right? The shear stress is force divided by area and it has the same units as the pressure, right? So it's going to be F L minus two on the left hand side. On the right hand side is the viscosity and DU DY is the mathematical uh, operators does not have units, so the u is lt minus 1 divided by length, right? So the lengths cancel, and you can see from here, I get myself f l minus 2, t minus 1 minus 1 is time, right? So this matches it, okay? Okay, in the next step, that is the step number 3, I'm going to determine what my r is, okay? So you can see, I look at the viscosity here, I have F, L, and T. So my R will be equal to three, okay? And step number four, the task is to determine the repeating variables, okay? So let's find out a few of them. I'll ask you the question. Let's say V, L, D. Is this a good selection, okay? Well, number one, I don't really like this. Let me start by that. Uh, one. This prediction equation finding will be very difficult because you're putting the left-hand side parameters within the repeating variables, so it will be a challenge for you, okay? Number two, we said that as a combination of V, L, and D, F, L, and T must be represented. So you can see L and T are represented in velocity, L and D, so I don't have any F as a combination of this, this is no good, okay? And let's look at the second caveat that we mentioned, and in that case, um, I shouldn't repeat the dimensions in two terms or more within the repeating variables. And you can see L and D has the same uh, dimension. So this is not a good selection at all. Okay. And I will go ahead and select another one. So let's select, for instance, D, viscosity, and P, right? Just as an arbitrary and see whether this will work. Okay, D is L, so that's fine. The viscosity is FLT. So you can see all three of the basic dimensions are represented and none of them has the same dimensions, so I like this. So this is a good selection, okay? And the step number five, we are gonna add one more to this and form my pi terms, okay? So pi one, let's write this here, is gonna be D, this goes to P, and I mentioned that please write the left-hand side parameter to here because the pi one, I want the pi one relationship to be the prediction equation, okay? And let's find out how many times do I need to repeat this process, okay, let's find out. So, what is the number of k? One, two, three, four, five. So five, and r is three, five minus three is two, minus one is one. So I repeat this k minus r minus one time, so that's one. So then I'm gonna have another pi term, pi two, and this time around, again, my d, viscosity, and p will repeat, and I will look at the parameter that I haven't accounted yet. So the velocity is accounted in one, P is accounted in both, L has not been accounted, D, 
everywhere because it's the repeating variable. Viscosity is everywhere because of the repeating variable. So I'm going to do do L and everything is checked. So I'm good to go. Okay. Let's find the prediction equation and symmetry requirements. But this time it's just singular symmetry requirement. There's only one of them. Okay. If I look at the symmetry requirement, that is an easier one to calculate. I will obtain L over D or D over L. Both are equally correct. Okay. Because the dimension of L is length, the dimension of D is length, so I can simply divide them side by side. Okay. And if you look at the first one, you may need to do it to the power of 1, to the power of A, to the power of B, to the power of C, if you don't see it. Okay. Uh, and then you have to go through the process that we have established. But if you go through the process, what you're going to find out is your A is going to be equal to minus 1, your B will be equal to plus 1 and your C will be equal to minus 1 as well. So then if I go out and rewrite this, my pi 1 will be equal to V times viscosity divided by P times D. Okay. And if you are not sure whether this is the right one or not, I recommend that we insert the units to or rather the dimensions to here and see what happens. Okay. So it's going to be LT minus 1. Viscosity is going to be F L minus 2 T, which we derived, right? And the pressure is going to be F divided by area and the distance is L. And see what happens. Let's look at the F's. F's cancel. Let's look at the L. I get myself L to the power of 1 up here, right? Because there's a minus 2, there's a plus 1. And down here I get the same one as well. You can see this L squares cancel, this L's cancel, right? Let's look at the T. On the numerator, I have t minus 1 times t to the plus 1, so they cancel each other anyways. So I, so this is fine. This is non-dimensional. V viscosity p times d will be a function of L over d, is what the, uh, how we should represent this. Okay, And you can see, if I write my prediction equation, it's going to look like this. Vm viscosity m divided by pm dm will be equal to V prototype viscosity prototype P prototype and D prototype. Okay, and this will be my prediction equation. And the similarity requirement will be LM over DM will be equal to LP over DP. And this is basically the geometric similarity, right? So this is the similarity requirement. Okay. So now I finished part A of the question because the part A of the question was asking me to find the similarity requirement and prediction equation. So I'm good to good, good to go there. But let's look at the part B, which is to ask the velocity scale. So let's establish that. Okay. So velocity scale is I will write as Vm over Vp. Scales are typically defined like this: m divided by p. Okay. Models at the top prototype is at the bottom because you typically get one fourth as an example in here. Okay. And if I rearrange the equation that I have up here, let's see what we'll find out. Okay. I will get this time around PM over pressure of the prototype. Okay. So I need to get the pressure ratio. DM over DP. This goes the prototype divided by viscosity of the model. Okay, so let's go up and read the question. Okay, I have my viscosity scale, okay, 1.4, and I have a model with a scale of 1 fourth. Okay, and I was not given the pressure ratio in this particular case, right? I did it on purpose in this particular question because sometimes we see in real life that. I don't have that information supplied to me. So what are you going to do is you will have to take, take that one, right? The scale to be one. What else can you do? So this means that I will be able to accomplish the same pressure that I obtained in my prototype in my model study as well. As I wasn't given that, I'm going to just take this as one. Okay. So this is an assumption or this is something that you may want to face in the real life applications and the, you know, class purposes, homeworks, exams, there will be much more, uh, constraint. Okay. So I'm going to say that this is one. Okay. And they told me that's dm over dp. Remember dm over dp? That's the scale, right? This is one fourth given the question statement, right? 
And now, also in the question statement, I was given the viscosity scale as this as well, right? 1.4 this time, not 1 over 1.14, right? Um, so, okay, then I'm going to insert this here as 1 over 4, and over here, I'm going to insert this 1 over 1.4, right? Because I'm writing viscosity prototype divided by viscosity of the model, so this is inverse of that. Okay, so from here, what I'm going to get is Vm over Vp is equal to 1 over 5.6. So this is my final answer for the part.